Hey guys, I um, wanted to do a little vi a little video segment here for you. Took the Porsche to the drags today for the first time to a test and tune. Got to um, do some data logging. Data logging is very handy, and this is what I'm going to tell you how to do on this video, which I've already did on that how to tune the base map uh, videos, uh, that hour or something video I stuck up a little while back here last week. I told you a little bit about this, but today I'm going to show you how you can actually tune with it. So, um, when you want a data log, you're going to use the VCM scanner. You're going to connect to the computer with this Thunderbolt over here, lightning bolt. And then when you're ready to start data logging, you'll hit this little start scanning icon. And this information you see on the screen will start going across, depending on which, ta which uh, gauge display you have up. I like to use this one here, the charts. And I uh, have it set to show RPM, injector duty, map sensor, KPA, wideband. Um, again, you have to... This is only possible if you tie your wideband into your HP tuners. Um, there's tutorials out there how to do that. Advanced, throttle position sensor, engine coolant, voltage doesn't seem to pick up anything, so it's not working. Uh, cylinder air mass and intake air temperatures. Okay, so um, here we have a pull I did down the track. This actually was the last one I saved, I believe. Let's double check here. Uh, open log file, pass number five. That I saved. I, yeah, I believe that's it right there. Okay, yeah. So, um, let's kind of go through the pass here. So, here's me idling. I've already done my burnout. Uh, I pull up to the tree, I pre stage and stage, and I go up on the two step, as you can see. But I mean, I go onto the trans brake, as you can see with the throttle position sensor going to 100% throttle. RPM start coming up to where I want to be at. Which is around 3,500, um, and then uh, you see I built boost here in the purple. Boost came up a couple pounds, and voila, I launched right here. So there you see the car making the pass, uh, shifting into second gear right here with the drop down in the RPM, uh, shifting into third gear, and then finishing out here at the finish line. So what can we tell by this data log of the pass? Well, we can look at the air fuel ratios first of all, and we can see that here I was perfect. I want to be between 11.3 and 11.7 typically, all right, at this boost level. So here we are, right in there, perfect in the range. Up oh, here we start getting a little bit, little bit leaner than what I want to be. Not hateful, but once it gets up into here, once I shift into drive, then it does. Then it starts to get a little bit leaner than what I want. And there's a couple reasons for this. It could be because, look at the intake air temperatures. You see them climbing? And you see the timing being sucked away? Timing's dropping down. I wanted to be at 14 degrees there. It's only at 13. Um, this has, this tune file I'm running is um, set up for the most part for a methanol car. A methanol car will never, methanol injection will never let your intake air temperatures get that high. So it's set to detect when my methanol fails and I can actually show you the table here. Let's see. It'll be underneath. Uh, bear with me guys, I'm tired. I'm trying to get this here. It'll be under um, Take air spark. Yeah. So here's manifold pressure. 100 is zero vacuum, so anything above it is uh, boost. And this last row here. So you see, whenever the ink take air temperatures get up to 113, it pulls out some timing: two degrees, three degrees, four degrees as it goes across. So right around 113 degrees um, is where it actually starts to actually pull a lot. But it'll start to pull a little before because it actually takes the, the value between these two and extrapolates it so after 104 degrees it's going to start trickling some out so let's go take a look at the log and see if that holds true so here we go timing is at uh, let's get the pool done here here we go I wanted to be at 14 degrees or, yeah 14 degrees and there it is it's at 14 um, it's doing well and as the temperature starts coming up there we there we hit 109, which is getting close to 114. It pulled out a half degree, and as the temperatures got more, it pulled out another half degree. There, it pulled out another half degree, 
ultimately it um, ended up pulling out a degree and a half on me. Actually, two degrees there, twelve and a half is down to. Um, by the time the pull, the pass was over, that pulled some horsepower away for sure. Two degrees timing, um, you know, could, that, that's a substantial amount of power in these cars. Uh, so that tells me right there that um, I, I know I was heat soaked. I looked at my time slips. I was going right back in the lanes. So that's the only reason why I got that hot. It was actually a 50 degree day today. And if you look at my first data log versus this one, the temperatures never got that high. Um, the last two did, but they were only separated by, uh, well, at 12.52, and then I was back again at 102. So it was literally 10 minutes between the last two passes. <laughs> Car had 10 minutes cooldown time. Uh, no, 10 minutes total. So that was like, including the making the pass and everything. So it was 10 minutes between the two passes. And that's why it's a little warm on the engine temperature and whatnot. But anyway, we can look here and uh, see the wideband and see that what it was doing and know now that, hey, I was a little bit, little bit lean here, right around um, 200 kPa and um, 5400 RPM. So by knowing that, we can go over here to the tune file, um, find the 200 kPa mark under primary main B, and uh, let's see, 5400 RPM. 200 kPa will be right over in here. So, right in this range, right here, let's see, yep, right in here, I have to richen it up a little bit. As you can see, it actually starts does start to go lean. Here it's rich, and here it's leaner. So, uh, and this, this one here shouldn't be an 89 either. That should probably be up to a 91 as well. So, I can go in here now and uh, fix this by increasing this, we'll do this one to a 93, this one to a 93, and uh, in case I ever start revving this puppy out any further, I should probably adjust these as well. I don't haven't been really revving out this far too much. Um, these 80s got to go, so that's, uh, especially down here, that's higher boost. So let's make these all go up to like, oh, I'm sorry, did not mean to do that. Let's go here, and let's just change all these to uh, 93 for now. That'll just future data logging will um, help me dial this in a little bit better uh, down the road here. This is just kind of an, an, an anticipation for uh, future kind of smoothing them out. But there we go. So now that should be all solved. And like I said, this is all based off of my data log. I'm able to tell um, what's going on. Uh, the car probably would have uh, pulled much harder there uh, had I not been pulling away two degrees of timing from the high intake air temperatures. 122 is not hateful. 122 won't cause any problems. Um, I can actually tell it not to take that out. But like I said, I plan on putting methanol in the car. And if you ever want to put methanol in your car, having that, um, having this little, what's that? It's under spark. Down here. There. Having this set up can help you because, like, with methanol, you'll never go above 113 degrees intake air temperature. So, if your methanol kit runs out of fuel of methanol or it fails, and you have some pretty high boost, go ahead and throw some high values in here for retard, and it'll help possibly save your engine from popping when you're making a pass if your methanol kit fails on you. Um, technically, I could actually take that away a little bit there because. Um, I ain't putting methanol on. I mean, I, I don't have methanol right now, so I shouldn't be... Oh, crap, I don't want to do that. I should not be pulling timing away as bad as this is at only 122 degrees. Probably um, what I could do is uh, lower these down, change this to a zero, change this to a, a one. And then it won't pull so much away for now while I'm not methanol, especially when I round robin or have to get... Round robin is basically a slang around here for getting right back up in the lanes after making a pass. That's about it, guys. So, um, yeah, this is how you can tune off of a log file and how handy the log files are. Learn a lot of information from them. Uh, even stuff about your converter. You can see how good it drops on shifts. Here we hit, uh, I shipped a little early on first and the second. It looks like 5,800 and then it dropped to 52. So that's a six, 700 RPM drop, which is 
what most stock converter companies want you to have. Here again, uh, 5961, 54, 53. So uh, we're getting on average a five to seven hundred RPM drop on shifts. Not too, not too hateful. The converter's not too bad. Um, injector duty cycle's looking good. I'm only using half of my injectors, uh, 80 pounders, for, for to keep the air fuel ratios where we're at. Uh, we can use the map. KPA to determine the amount of boost we want to run. Uh, I know that um, by looking at these numbers, and I have a calculator to do it, but I have it kind of memorized a little bit. Um, this is about 14 and a half pounds of boost, and this is about 13.8 pounds of boost. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, we uh, we can really use these data log files to uh, to help you tune your your file.